and actress Natalie Cole. Pastor of La Palma Christian Center, Palma, California, Daryl Yarborough. Legendary Grammy Awarded vocalist, Smokey Robinson. Founder and president of Feed the Children, Larry Jones. Recording artist and Grammy winner, C.C. Winans. Award-winning musical innovator and vocalist, Kirk Franklin. Ready to take your calls, prayer partners from around America. time tonight I, I guess everyone actually got to see the open we have one of the most incredible there is more talent on this stage than what are we doing here what are we doing here is the big question <laughs> and where did there, there oh. you know what we are going to do something you know first of all I'm gonna set this piece of paper down because I actually don't need it Larry Jones thank you for being here with us this is Larry Jones I love him very much Feed this is children. my uh, this is my pastor, Gary Zamora, whose mic is squeaking. And uh, I love him very much. He's going to open the program in prayer in just a moment. This is my beautiful, lovely wife. And um, I'm going to be... Thanks. I'm going to so be in trouble in about nine seconds. Because... Because I'm going to say how much no! and how cute your hair is right okay. now. She cut it all off. CC Winans. And now... The it's reason CeCe's that she fault. cut it is because at the Dove Awards, okay? Girl, and, you rock. Yeah, she, <laughs> she had her hair short, and Lori goes, that's it, I'm cutting that's my hair. It. Okay? And I almost came to Nashville to go with you to have my hair. Uh-huh, I almost did. Yeah, I just, then I just we took it upon myself. We <laughs> have a bunch of preachers and singers on this oh, program awesome. tonight, and we're going to we're gonna actually get into it in a minute. And you know what? I... Starting with behind the scenes today, just a little bit ago, some of you watching, you know, I, I, I have been meeting so many new people lately that have said, you know what, I, I've, I've seen, you know, Trinity Broadcasting or, you know, we, we live up in, in Hollywood and we've been traveling and Lori and I, oh, even over the last one year, has all led up to me wanting to say a couple of things about really what's going on. And I got a chance to do that on behind the scenes a little bit, but this microphone, Okay, started a quest to be what it is tonight 30 years ago. Right. 30 years ago, my sweet little mom and dad, who were wondering about what God's call was for them, bought Channel 40, which is right here in Los Angeles, California, and somehow, some way, God's plan unfolded, and for the next 30 years, station after station after station was added, and we find ourselves today with just in the continental United States, about 600 TV stations, 7,000 cable systems, 22 million homes connected just by the two DBS. Uh, and this is, okay, in America alone, we have five uplink or seven uplink stations, 33 satellites that are beaming this microphone around the world right here, right now. And that is awesome. Now, the question is, what are Why? we going to do? Why would God do that? <laughs> That's right. Okay, what was the purpose for this vast thing being put together? And I believe that part of that. What if we looked at tonight as a, this is, this is the very beginning of something. What if we looked at tonight, okay, nod at me in the audience every once in a while. What if tonight was a foundation? What if we built upon tonight and the things that we talk about are all into the future? What if we call to a, ge a generation of people that will say from this point forward, no matter what has happened in the past between, let's say, denominational walls, you know, offenses, I don't like the programming, it doesn't fit my style. It doesn't, what if we call tonight 
the starting? What if we call tonight a foundation and say from this point forward, let's see a vision. What is the body of Christ to look at? What is it supposed to be? What is it supposed to say? What is it supposed to declare about who Jesus Christ is and how he sets people free? What if we start over tonight and say, tonight we start stewarding a foundation with 33 satellites that link this entire world around. My voice right now in some territories is being held so that it gets put into prime time a little bit later. But everything we say tonight, folks, is going around the world. And this program tonight is meant to minister to those watching. And you know what? Can you believe it? It's because of you. How could we not be mindful of the people that are watching tonight? How could we not be mindful of these in the audience? Because it was because of their listening and declaring and agreeing with a vision 30 years ago that we stand here tonight. Now, what about seeing into the future? What about seeing a nation? What if we all got together in like mind, what if we were in one accord like they were back in the second chapter of Acts? What if all of a sudden everyone said, hey Matt, I buy that, let's start over. Let's say that we are all, those that call upon the name of the Lord, let's say that we're one, now what? <laughs> you know what we could do if we were really one? We would, we would elect every dog catcher and every president of the United States from now on. If we would just say, Let's start over. And let's not worry about who is charismatic. Let's not worry about who's not charismatic. Let's not talk about all of that kind of stuff. Let's just say we call upon the name of the Lord because he set us free. Come on. What if we did that tonight? And what if we all got together? And what if we said because we're together, we will have influence over the nations and the generations? What if all of a sudden the president had to listen to us because we were so in number that he would say, we better go check and see what those folks are doing on that program they call the <laughs> Praise the Lord program because whatever they say, we better listen to here in Washington. We better listen to because they're one, they're united. I'm calling to those friends in the Baptist community. I'm calling to those in the Presbyterian denominations and some that, you know, would say, you know what, that, 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 that network thing that they call TBN, you know, it just doesn't minister to me. Well, let's start over tonight. I haven't said anything doctrinal that you disagree with. I've said, let's get together and let's join forces and let's see into the future. What can we be? What can the nation of the Lord be like? If we, what can the body of Christ be like? If we'll just agree to be one, let's just start there. And let's say the only thing that we have in common so we can all be there is this. What about this? I've been set free. Okay, does anyone disagree with that? Can you be in disagreement with that? Okay, then let's start there, let's unite, and let's, let's go make some movies. Let's go do some new albums. Okay, let's start, let's start influencing because of the power that we have to do it. And it all takes one thing, it takes one simple thing. Let's agree to do it. I'm calling to you tonight. Let's make tonight, right here, right now, this stage, this group of people, and let's declare a thing. Let's, let's declare that we're in agreement, that all we are is set free. Let's declare that. Pastor Gary, let's, uh, let's tag team for a moment. You go ahead and take it from there and uh, pray for this broadcast and then and then uh, let's figure out what we're going to do. We have absolutely no Somebody agenda. Somebody could probably sing except that, <laughs> except that these people are going <laughs> to knock it out. Yeah, you guys, all you guys showed up. We're here and we're going to do something that's going to change. You know what? Let's just say this. Tonight is the beginning. Yeah. This is a new foundation and we're all in agreement. We are just simply set free. That's all. We're just free. That's all. That's our doctrine. We're free. 
You know, this is this is it. Why don't we say this? Why don't we say what John the Baptist said in preparation for the coming Messiah? The kingdom of heaven is at hand. How about if we begin with the gospel that Jesus Christ preached, what preached, which was the kingdom of God is at hand. The word of the Lord says that Jesus spoke these words. He said, the kingdom of God will be taken from a people that do not bear the fruit of it because they're afraid of it. And it'll be given to a nation, to a generation, to a people that bear the fruit of the kingdom of God. And what if God has hidden, concealed the kingdom of God in the places that we're most afraid to go? What if he hid it behind tradition? What if he hid it behind religion? Not, not so we would be, become confused and intertangled with disagreements and argues and in, in inhibit our ability to see. But what if he hid it in places we were afraid to go so the fruit of the Spirit were the only thing? that would show the kingdom of God is at hand. What if bearing the fruit of the Spirit, what if only the places that it takes your patience to get you will reveal the kingdom of God? What if only the places that you're afraid of, the places you call worldly, the places you say are so bound by the devil, what if God has concealed his kingdom and his power? What if the Lord really is concealed in the blackness, as he said, in the darkness, and the glory of God is revealed when the sons of God are manifest and say, let's take the nations of the earth, let's not be afraid of the furnace. Let's not be afraid of the sea. Let's not be afraid of the corporate world. Let the Spirit of God declare himself for who he is in a generation and a nation that will declare he is Lord of all and over all. We are a generation just like that. And I, I, I have the sense to say this to the corporate world, to the church world, to the business world, to the marketplace. God is saying, I love you. And I've concealed my kingdom and my mysteries and my power and my glory and my honor in those places. And I sense the Spirit of God saying this, out of all of these cities, out of all of these nations, out of all of these places that say that they are bound and that they have no fire and they have no authority, even within the churches, I see the Spirit of God saying this, I am going to reveal the kingdom of my power and my passion to a nation and to a generation that are not afraid to go where I tell them to go and declare that I am God of all, in all, and through all, and to me be glory, honor, and praise. That's what I hear the Spirit of God saying to a generation. We don't have to be afraid of the places of authority and power. And tonight I believe, just as God would send forth the singers to make preparation for a miracle, tonight as the singers, the ministers as well, but as these incredible singers begin to reveal the Lord to everybody. Praise the Lord to all the young people. Yes. All the young people. Let me hear you make some noise, young people. Where you at? There you go. There you go. Yeah. I want to show love and respect to my beautiful wife, Tammy. Who's with me. Got to show love to my girl. I, uh, I, uh, you know, I love to see what's happening. And to, and, and part to see the church come together and the Christians come together and, and to be unified as one. My appeal is that as believers, when we get saved and full of God's spirit, let's stop being weird. <laughs> because what happens is when we get saved, we get weird. And some of us become so extreme because we don't have enough confidence. Watch this, watch this, watch this. You gotta hear this in the spirit. We don't have enough confidence in the Holy Spirit to keep us. We think we have to get weird so that we don't go back to the same we came from. We, we think that we gotta throw away every TV. We think that we can't go to the movies. We can't play dominoes. We can't play Uno. And then the world looks at us and says, well now, if you gotta do all that and sit around and just speak in tongue for 45 minutes a day to keep your salvation, then I don't want any part of it. We need to show the world that there is a well of life that starts springing from the Spirit. <laughs> Let me tell you something. Those of you that are watching, where's the camera at, where's the camera at? Those of you that are watching, you do not have, young people, you don't have to lose your cool. You don't have to lose your flavor and your style when you get saved. You don't have to lose your, I mean, you can let your hair be in cornrows, you can let your jeans be baggy and have a little, you know? We've got to show, we've got to show the world, listen to me, we've got to show the world that you can be saved and be effective in the culture and stop looking crazy to the culture. 
when you get saved, you can still be the person that God created you to be and have an impact. Don't leave IBM. Stay at IBM and get, and get IBM saved. We want, it, it's, it's, it, 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 God did not call us to create a subculture within ourselves. So that all, so what happens is, is you're the only one getting preached to, so you leave every Sunday fat and and the world is skinny because they're not getting to Jesus. You keeping all the Jesus to yourself and now you're fat. You're bloated with the spirit. And because you're so bloated, nobody in the culture has been affected by the food you're eating and you're the only one getting fat and the kids are still committing suicide. The STDs are still getting higher. And we got all these mega churches all over the world and we still got AIDS and we still got drugs that are killing church kids. I have friends of my son that say that they don't go to some church lock-ins because they say if you go to that church lock-in, you're going to lose your virginity at that church lock-in. This is what the peers, this is what the homeboys of my 15-year-old son will tell me. You go to that church lock-in, you're going to lose your virginity at that church lock-in. And you know what? Some church people don't want to talk like that, but that's keeping it real. That's keeping it real. You want to affect the culture? You want to come together and be one? Let's say, let's stop trying to leave the world and create our own subculture and our own subworld. Stay on your job and be a light on your job so that your job can be affected by the power of the Holy Spirit. You want to talk about changing the world? You change the world like that. Come on! Let's, uh, let's give a quick, uh, warm welcome to Smokey Robinson, who just joined us. Uh, you just uh, you just walked in, but were you feeling some of that going on right there? I felt it from downstairs. Come on. <laughs> I sure did. I was really glad to hear him say you can have your hair in the rolls if you want to. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Um, let's, uh, do you, do you, what, do you, do you feel like doing, uh, w a roll in here? Do you want to do Let Your Light Shine or do you want to do Gang Banging kind of right after prayer? Wh which one do you want to do? I'll let you make that call. I'll do Let Your Light Shine. Okay, we got it ready. Pastor Gary, let's pray. Let's get this thing going as if it isn't already. And CC, Natalie, you guys get ready to weigh in here in just a minute. We're going to go to Iraq. The gentleman sitting back here has already been in and out. Let's Welcome Larry Jones to this set tonight. <laughs> Feed the children. And I want to say quickly that at 9 p.m. when this program goes off the air, an incredible documentary entitled Life's Interruptions, God's Opportunities is going to be playing right here on this TBN station that you're watching. And it is an incredible story of a little boy who asked Larry Jones for a few cents, a few pennies, and that story then, a few years later, turns out to be millions of people being help, helped and fed around the world through Feed the Children. Every day. Life's interruption, God's opportunities, and it's airing right here on TBN at 9. Daryl Yarborough, where are you real quick? Jump here, up Pastor. here with me, Pastor Daryl. Anyone, uh, anyone in the house know Daryl Yarborough? <laughs> Pastor Daryl? Tonight's program. Were you uh, were you feeling any of that uh, kind of unity stuff going on? Were you feeling any of that? Oh, I love it when we get together and God's people, with all the unique backgrounds and wonderful characteristics, God shows up in a wonderful way and powerful things happen. Yeah. I wouldn't turn my dial tonight if I was at home watching this program. God, you know what? Uh, we got a few singers on this platform too. You you don't sing, do you? Sometimes. Okay. Yeah. You, you probably you probably wouldn't want to sing tonight, though. I'm not singing tonight with these guys. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Neither am I. Pastor Gary, let's lead uh, this great congregation of what could be hundreds of thousands or even millions of people around the world. If you're watching in another country, you know what? This program tonight is to minister to you, is to, you know what, it's, it's visionary. Let's look into the future and let's see what God has to say to the nations and the generations. Pastor Gary. Hallelujah. Please. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus said, I am the same yesterday, today, forever. I am the future. So we can experience the future right now. And that's what God has given us faith for. 
And Father, we pray tonight in Jesus' name that the future would be manifest. We pray that the kingdom of God would be manifest in the lives of every viewer tonight in Jesus' name. Every individual, whether they're sick in their body, sick in their spirit, discouraged, in need of a miracle, in need of a financial miracle, in need of a healing in their home, Father, in their bodies, in their lives, whatever it is, in Jesus' name, we declare this, the kingdom of God is at hand. And Father, so tonight we pray through the message that is spoken in lyrics and song and music. Father, every word that is spoken, regardless of how it is articulated tonight, we pray that in Jesus' name the kingdom of God will be heard. You will be glorified and you will be manifest in the hearts and the lives of your people. And Father, we pray this set tonight would be concealed behind your presence and behind your image. And it would be gl gl your glowing presence, your glowing figure, your glowing image. It would be seen and that you would be glorified. We declare in Jesus' name a thing. And we declare this a miracle. Miracles are in this place. Miracles are behind these cameras. Miracles are in the homes. Miracles are in the nations. Healing, salvation, and deliverance are present right now. The kingdom of God is at hand. We give you praise for it, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. You know what? I want to declare something, too. I, I was at Bishop Charles Blake's uh, church this last Sunday, yes. and Bishop Kenneth Dupree, your lovely husband, said something so important. Let me tell you something. He said, put a tennis racket in my hand, and it is not valuable. You put it in Venus or Serena Williams hand and it becomes valuable golf clubs in my hand are not valuable golf clubs in Tiger Woods hands are very valuable why don't we put this program in God's hands tonight why don't we do that why don't we why don't we just say that everything we do and everything we say tonight is in God's hands and it becomes very valuable. Lord, I thank you that this microphone is in your hand, not mine. And everything that is said tonight is for your glory. That'll do it right there. That's all that needs to happen. You know what? Um, we're going to uh, start things off. Smokey, come here and tell me, let me tell you how much I love you again. We got to go down to Malibu together and we got to shoot this music video and uh, your incredible new album. And just give everybody, do we have a, a shot of it? I, I just wanted to, to see, there it is. And uh, look at those eyes. Look at those beautiful green eyes. And I promise you something, they are <laughs> fascinating when you get behind a camera. <laughs> <Ow! laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know what? Let's go to right now, Let Your Light Shine. This is off the brand new album. We'll tell you more about that uh, as the program goes. Smokey Robinson, complete Christian album. And let me tell you something. I had the opportunity, it was my privilege, to take Smokey out. We traveled all over L.A. and around and, and up and down and up and down beaches and into... Uh, you know, kind of gang areas, and, and the one music video that we're going to show you a little bit later in the program called Gang Banging is awesome. It, I love it. Well, I, I just want to say you're awesome. Uh, Matt directed, and, you know, produced the videos for the, for the album, and um, he is so spontaneous. You just, I don't know what you're going to do from one minute to the next. But when you I don't do either. it, it ha oh, you don't need that. <laughs> You've been with him a long time. But uh, just from one minute to the next, you're doing stuff and you're stopping me and you're saying, go here and go there and do this and do that. And I didn't have the privilege of seeing any of the footage until about a week ago. You know, we shot this a while back and I didn't have a, uh, a chance to see any of it because I've been traveling. And when I did see it, I said, well, he knew what he was doing because. Uh, it came out really, really, really great, my brother, and I appreciate you taking the time to work with me and to do this. Um, just, you're wonderful, and thank you. Okay, I'm going to cry now. And uh, said from a guy that doesn't even remember how many albums he did, okay, because it's like hundreds, okay, and hundreds. Natalie Cole, uh, what do you think about uh, us getting together and starting over in the body of Christ? What do you think about that? I also want to say praise the Lord, and I'm just so humbled and happy 
at the same time to be here. Um, I, I have been carrying this around in my spirit for a while now, and it just, God affirmed just this moment that I'm not crazy because Kirk said exactly what I've been thinking, that we cannot, uh, being in this environment is comfortable for all of us. Because we're all believers, we all know what's going on, we all know the name of Jesus, amen? Yeah. amen. But what Kirk said about going to your office, to your home, to your environments where it's totally different, y'all. That's where it gets really real. And we as believers and myself and Cece and Kirk, Smokey, those of us that are celebrities, high visibility, we have to start getting more real. We have to start getting courageous. Come on. We have to start using our influence in so many places. I know so many, as I told you and Lori, that I know so many celebrities who, who profess the name of Jesus, but they are really reluctant and afraid, and we have to pray for these people and give, get some, uh, equ we have to equip these people and, and encourage them, because this is the time. God is calling us yes. in so many ways, in so many forms, in so many fashions. And so when people see me, I want them to see, first of all, a woman of God. Amen. That's what I want Amen. them to see. Number one. Come on. When, when, Come on. when someone like Smokey says, uh, this is my first Christian album in all these, in all these years, it's what, what he's really saying is, this is my opportunity. This is my opportunity to finally... You know, Natalie, I, I, excuse me for cutting you off, but, uh, but since you're talking about that, I wanted to say, uh, the song you just saw, Let Your Light Shine On mm -hmm. Me, was the very first song that I wrote in this genre. I, I've been writing these songs for about six, seven years, you know, and I had the intentions of sending them to people like you guys, and, Hello. you know, and it just, it just turned out that the, I, the Lord impressed upon me to sing them myself, and uh, Let Your Light Shine is just about what you're talking about. I mean, because we go places, and when we go and perform and stuff like that, there are lights shining down on us, and, you know, the spotlight is on us, and so on and so forth, Amen. but I want wherever I go for His light yes. to shine on us. Yes. Come on. Yes. So Come on. And, and, don't, about. and don't think that the other thing about um, what I also like what Kirk said about getting real and keeping it real and not getting weird and not getting strange and not all of a sudden throwing everything out that you ever knew that you were ever familiar with because now you're a believer. That's just crazy because most of the people that are going to get saved, y'all, are not in the church. That's right. They're out, they're out in the world, you know, and we see them. And when we know we have impact on these people, just as, as singers, imagine the impact we can have on them when they see that our life is, we, we, we have a good life, we have a great life, we have someone to, to, to thank and owe it to. We are obligated. We are obligated. We Come are on. in a position. We are obligated. Obedience is better than sacrifice. Come on. We must do this. We must. We have to glorify his name wherever we go. It's time. And so I really am, I'm asking all of you to pray for all of us in the entertainment business, for those who are closet Christians, for those who are just <laughs> feeling a little, but it's, it's true and it's serious and there is, there is heartache there and there's, there's fear, there's anxiety and there's, there's just so much and we want to get courageous and we want to be able to step out on that stage even at the end of the evening and give a little testimony. Come on. It has to be radical. It has to be radical. We can't do it within the confines anymore of the business. You see what I'm saying? We have to do that. God has just put that on my heart for a while now. <gasps> I'm so glad I could say that. <laughs> you know what? Let me... I am not a preacher, and I don't even know a whole lot of gospel song, but I do know the Lord. And Come that's on. where I'm starting from, and I'll learn some gospel in a minute. You know what? Yes, sir. When, uh, when you said a little bit ago, uh, Kurt, that, you know, wh why are you getting out of IBM, and why aren't you staying there and doing your thing? You know what? Why don't we push the edge on that statement a little bit and, and say, you know, every once in a while, uh, it, it, if, the, if the shoe fits, wear it. And I'm just jumping off the platform that he started, okay? So blame it on him. I'm just pushing it a little bit. You know what? A lot of times Christian ministry is, is inside of the world of the not-for-profit kind of comp company thing, you know? A lot of churches are, are in the not-for-profit world. And all. What about pushing it to the level of going into Wall Street? Okay, if we're supposed to stay in IBM, okay, what about what about all of us getting together and going into Wall Street? What about Madison Avenue? See, Christians, we're not there either. Where is the influence of this world? Where was Jesus when his day? He was in the temple. 
Okay? That's where every issue was being hammered out in his time, in his society. It was right there. Okay, you know, what has uh, the impact now? How about Hollywood? Uh, How about Madison I, 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 I Avenue? I want to tell you about that. Uh, Come on. Um, uh, I, I go many times, and I speak at churches. I speak at gang meetings. I speak at... Um, at uh, rehabs and yeah. and hospitals and schools prisons. and and prisons, uh, absolutely juvenile. I speak in many 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 places. And my pastor happens to be here this evening. He's Apostle Al Fornes, and he's right over there. And he's uh, he happens to be here. He tells me, stay where you are. Yeah. Because staying where I am, see, I don't, you know, if I try to become a minister, yeah, you know. I would not be as effective as I am That's staying right. where I am, exactly. saying exactly. what I believe. Exactly. Yeah. So um, th you're absolutely right. I mean, we have to stay where we are. We have to, we have to take Jesus right. to the people. Take what we have, absolutely. not what we don't have. Uh, exactly. Right. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Well, well, exactly. I, I just want to say that Jesus is soon to come. Come on. He's Stand up. Come, come on up. And it's it's got to be all about him. Yeah. Get the, Not get the about hand us. going and the hanky <laughs> thing going. Come on. Not about <laughs> what we think or what we want. Yeah. And, and yeah. this is where God has been dealing with me at. It is time for us to surrender. Amen. 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 And it's not about tradition. Yes. It's not about religion, but it's about Jesus. Amen. And Jesus said, Jesus said, be ye holy, for I am holy. Amen. Now, we can't get around being holy because that's the thing that is going to draw people. Jesus was everywhere. He was not afraid of sinners, but he only did what the Father told him to do. We have to submit to him. And I'm a witness. God can use you anywhere, but you have to be where God tells you to be. <laughs> and the only way you can do that is to live a life of a worshiper and worship him. And you have to worship him every day. Amen. Worship is a lifestyle. It's not a song. Amen. Like she was saying, learning all the different songs. And it's, it's a lifestyle. Amen. And it's a lifestyle every day, getting up and worshiping him and saying, God, you're great. You're wonderful. You're God all by yourself. You're, you're Alpha and you're Omega. He loves to be praised. And so, and so I believe... This is the time for the body of Christ to come together like never before. We have to come together. We have to come together in order to accomplish those things that we must accomplish before Jesus returns. I believe that. I believe that. And so, so we, we have to live in a position of surrender. Because when you do that, then God will speak to you. You know, because we have to realize a worship is not about you. It's all about him. It's not about what you think. It's not about what you feel. But he said those who worship must worship in spirit and in truth. What is truth? Truth is the word of God. And only the word of God. You can't add. You can't take away. It's all about the word of God. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Oh, bless the name of the Lord. Come on. So when you worship in spirit and truth, you worship from your heart. You're not trying to impress anybody. You only, you only perform for an audience of one. I learned that from Sheila Wash. An audience of one. And when we begin to do that, when we begin to live a life of surrender and loving one another, forgetting about what you, we gotta love. Love is the most powerful thing. And we've got to come together. We have to love. Forget about the denominations and, and where you come from and how you praise the Lord. It's all about him. It's all about him. Hi, yeah, 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 yeah. When you love, it allows God to do those things that only he can do. But remember, worship in spirit and in truth. Because that is the only acceptable worship. It's a lot of worshiping going on, but God is not accepting all the worship that's going on. Oh, bless his name, oh, bless his name. Acceptable worship creates an atmosphere where miracles happen, where the dead are raised. <laughs> oh, bless the name of the Lord. Blind eyes are open. It's time for the power of God to move like never before. If not, we're going to lose our children. If not, we're going to lose our marriages. We have to operate in the power of God. But we have to do the things the way God wants us to do them. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Come on, praise the name of the Lord. He's worthy to be praised.
He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised. Oh, bless him, oh, bless him, oh, bless him, oh, bless him, oh, bless him. Come on, come on, he loves to be praised. He's worthy of the praise. He's worthy of the praise. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. He said, if you be ashamed of me, I'll be ashamed of you. You can lift them up anywhere. Wherever you are, lift them up. Wherever you are, lift them up. Let your light shine so the world will see. Lives are dependent on it. Somebody is dependent on you to stand up and be what God has called you to be. You know, a lot of times, Smokey said about being a preacher. Guess what? We're all priests. We're all priests. Somebody's soul is dependent on you to stand up and speak the word of the Lord. Don't be ashamed. Don't be afraid. We're all sinners saved by grace. If it wasn't for the blood of the lamb, we wouldn't be here. But because of his blood, we have the authority, the same authority that Jesus had. It's by that name. Demons even trampled by that name. The name of Jesus. There's something about that name. He is the lily of the valley. He's the bride and morning star. Them. So I <laughs> to you. My will I give to you. My will I give to you. I'll do. I'll do. Come on. Sing it with us, guys. Do you use me, Lord? Do you use me, Lord? To show someone the way. To show someone the way. And enable me to say. And enable me to say. Everyone, my storage is empty. My storage is empty. Come on, come on and worship him. And I am available to you. See, that's the thing. It's not about yes. your ability. Yes. But it's about your ability. Waiting on somebody to say yes. My story is empty. Oh, yeah, yeah. And I am available. Everybody, one more time. One more time. One more time. Listen, I know you're listening to my sister CC. Everyone, in your own personal way, let's worship and make it real this last time. My storage. My storage is empty. And right now. He's got to be first. Yes, yes. Teach. 
teach He's got to be first. Come on, surrender everything. Whatever you're holding on to that's holding you back, give it up. Give it up. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. Let's break it down. All to thee, Say with it, say with it. Surrender, surrender, surrender. Surrender, surrender. Surrender, surrender, surrender. I surrender my will. I that you were saying when you were a little girl. There had to be something on Sunday morning was, that I you was, were just... I was thinking of the first song that I ever learned in a little apartment in Chicago on 83rd and King Drive. And y'all may have to help me with this. Now, if this is not your key, let me know and I'll change the key. Oh, how well do I remember how I doubted did not know for certain that my sins were washed, were washed away. Oh, but, oh, but, oh, but when the Spirit tried to tell me You see, I endeavor to be happy. And to me, myself, believe. But I'm here to tell you tonight that it's real. It's real. Oh, it's real. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. You ought to praise God. You ought to praise God. And I know for myself, I don't know about y'all, but I know for myself. It's real. Oh, it's real. Oh, somebody needs to know tonight that it's real. It's real, it's real, it's real, it's real, it's real, it's real, it's really real, y'all. Oh, it's real. Praise God. 
just know. Thank you, Jesus, I know that it's real. Somebody say hallelujah. Somebody say thank you, Lord. Ooh. It's real. Show sure up, it's real. Show sure up, it's real. Yes, indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's real. It's real, y'all. And, and what you say? When you know it's real, all your doubts are gone. It's a freedom when you realize he's real. When you totally, totally surrender and realize it's not about you, but it's all about him, you're free. You're free to walk in authority. So I'm so glad to know that he's real. <laughs> Come on, put those hands together and bless his name. You know what's so you know what's so incredible um when everybody um was talking and then when Cece got up you know as soon as Cece started talking like can you just feel just the presence of the Holy Spirit in her and you know you know that didn't come that didn't come just from working in no studio you know and 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 I think that if we really want to make the impact that we're talking about there's got to be some personal one on one time there's got to be some uh some, some stuff that um you probably heard this when you were younger this this word Call uh, this work called shedding. There's got to be some wood shedding, you know. When no one else is looking, there's got to be some one-on-one -on -one time with, with, with that book and your daddy, so that when you show up to the job, your 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 spirituality is not conjured up. Yeah. You, you don't even have to say anything. Yes. When, when everybody else is cussing and you're not cussing, when everybody else is gossiping, when when everybody else is looking at crazy stuff on the internet. And, and when your life, you don't even have to say what you are. Yeah. People can say, you know what? She don't cuss. She don't talk that mess. She don't do all that gossiping. And if you really want to make an impact, the world is sick and tired of hearing the talk, talk, talk of the church. Amen. They need to see a lifestyle yes. that connects along with the talk that they talk. Amen. So talking about, talking about shining in a light that shines within. I want to see, we, we, we always uh, want to be... Uh, uh, people who walk in the light but with joy. There is nothing more depressing and more upsetting for me to be in the presence of some Christians who are depressed and unhappy. I can't take it. I, I can't take it. And I'm not saying that it's not natural to be. Of course, you're going to be down and out and da-da-da. I understand that. But you know where your hope is. And it's those times that you're most down and most feeling out that you can call on the Lord. And I'm telling you, he will give you joy and peace that surpasses all understanding. But you got to look for it, y'all. And you cannot witness without that joy in your heart. Because it is in your test that people are going to be looking at you to see how you handle it. Do you understand what I'm saying? We can be happy and everything is all right when everything is all right. But how are you when everything is not all right? Can you still praise the Lord when everything is not all right? Come on. That's what I'm talking about. The joy. Let's not forget to have the joy. Yes, sir. Yes, in spite yes. of. That's the you strength. You see what I'm saying? That's the strength. Yes, but you know what? Amen. You don't even Amen. have to think about the joy. Amen. Or think about the light Amen. when the light is in you. Yes. That's why, you know, because Jesus is coming soon, he's pulling cover over everything that's not like him. A lot of us has been in church for a long time. You're right, Cece. And you know right. what? <laughs> God has not accepted it oh. because Jesus is just Jesus. That's good. You That's know? Good. That's good. He was Jesus. Even when he was on the cross, he was still Jesus. So through the hard times, he still responded like Jesus. That's good. That's good stuff. You know, when you're around your enemies, the Bible tells us you have to love your enemies. But when you have Jesus, you know what? Jesus does that. All he does is love. 
you know? That's good, that's good. So that's when you, you don't stuff. have to remind the light to shine. That's when it's stuff. on, it's on. That's good stuff. Right. No matter where it is. That's good stuff. But, but <laughs> I, it's, it's a song I sing and it's just, it's, it's real simple. It says, I want to walk like you. I want to talk like you. I want to look like you, just like you, Jesus. I want to pray like you, want to love like you. I want to live like you, just like you, Jesus. I want to walk like you. I want to talk like you. I want to look like you, just like you, Jesus. I want to pray like you, want to love. I want to look like you, just like you, Jesus. Just like you, just like you. I want to be just like you, just like you, just like you. I want to be just like you, just like you, just like you. Just like you, I want to be just like you, just like you, just like you, help me to be just like you. I like that, I like, I like that. I like that. Pray I like, that. like you, pray like you, help me to pray, pray like you. Give me a break, give me a break. Give the folk at home something to talk about. Oh, I wanna dance like you. I wanna dance like you. Just like you, Jesus. Just I wanna like dance you. like you. Just I wanna like dance you. like you. Just I wanna like you. dance like you. Just I wanna like dance like you. Oh, I wanna like you. to say to everybody who is listening in. Come on. Um, Come on. First of all, I want to tell you something. Uh, you said something that let me know that um, the songs on my CD are on the right track because there's a, the lead off song on there is a song called Jesus Told Me to Love You. Come on. You can't be my enemy because Jesus told me to love you. Yes. Now, and I feel like, you know, I don't have to like you, but you I gotta love got you. got to love you. Because Jesus told me to. <laughs> You know, yes. but uh, but uh, oh, yeah. I also want to say to everybody, it's a wonderful, wonderful thing Come to on. know that you're on the winning team. Come on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a really comforting thing to know that you are on the team that is run by number one. Yes, See? yes. Can't so um, those of you who are hesitant to accept Jesus, 
Those of you who think that if you do, you gotta walk around like this all the time, you know. Um, Jesus came to give you life more abundantly. He came to give you life, not to make your life be dull and not have any fun. That's the way I, I, because we're having so much fun up here tonight, maybe want to say this. You can see that we have fun. Yeah. We have fun all the time. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. And like Natalie said, when you really believe and you know whose side you're on and you know who's on your side and you know who you know, see it's not always what you know, it's who you know. Yeah. It's easy to be happy or to feel good about your down times because you know your down times are just temporary. Yes. See, everything that's happening here is a temp. What a wonderful thing it is for me to know that I have eternal life. No matter what I accomplish here, no matter what goes on on this earth, no matter how long I live, if I live to be 500 years old, that's a long time. That's a long time. That's a long, That's a long time. time. Nothing compared to eternity. But it is nothing compared to how long I'm going to live because I got eternal life That's through Jesus. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So, um, yes, sir. Yes, sir. this is a great night. Yeah. Smoke, you know all, of those of you who, who, all those of you who tuned in tonight, I'm glad you tuned in tonight because yeah, yeah. you can yeah. see what's happening. We don't even have to tell you. You can see what's happening. Yeah. Smoke. I want you to be. Jesus? Yes. Uh -huh. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I don't you want to see. Know, it I had starts a, right here. I had a discussion. In your face and my face and your yeah. face. I had a discussion with somebody the other day. Awesome. And I was telling them how I feel like, you know, I'm one of his sheep, but I'm also a shepherd. Mm -hmm. You know, and they were saying, well, you, you know, he was the shepherd. I didn't say I was the shepherd. I said I'm a shepherd because I want to gather for him. I want to gather sheep also. I want to go out and be an example. I want people to look at me and say, I'll have what he's having. You know, because it's so wonderful. It's so extremely wonderful to be in Jesus' camp. Amen. Amen. Those of you who are not, come on. Amen. Come on, join in on what is eternally the winning side. Amen. Amen. Smokey. Yes. Smokey, listen, man, you know, we are having this wonderful opportunity to just share and, 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 and just listen to you make that great appeal. Why don't we also include this brother who has been on the other side? Yes. His work doesn't have lights, camera, and, and action. A lot of times he has to stand on the, 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 the blessings that other people give. And, and you know what? We were just talking about how the kingdom should be able to the kingdom should be able to affect the kingdom. Yeah. But we always have to go to people who don't love our Jesus mm -hmm. to get resources to, to do for God's people. Yeah. And, the, and, and we know that the wealth of the wicked is stored up for the righteous. And here's a brother who has fed thousands and thousands and thousands of people, of young children. Yeah, millions every day. every day. So please, why don't we just hear from you? We haven't had a chance to hear from, from, from you yet. And well, I want to I wanna say... Let's make welcome Larry Jones. You know, when, when I got married, when I got on, when, when I got married, uh, I, you know, about the third morning, I sang in the shower, and uh, my wife said, "Would you please not do that?" And I said, "Well, the Lord said make a joyful noise." And she said, that wasn't even noise, that was racket. So if my wife could see me now, <laughs> I really mean, I'm, I'm being, I really am being blessed. But, you know, what, one of the great things about being a Christian and coming to TBN is that when you, when you bring people together, uh, you know, Matt, he didn't know when he said what he said tonight about a foundation and what's getting ready to happen. About a little over two months ago, Matt and I and Laurie were out here on the back parking lot somewhere. And uh, we were talking about sending food to Iraq. We were talking about, you know, satellite dishes. Yes, yes. Well, when Saddam was the dictator, if you were caught with a satellite dish, you got six months in jail. And if whatever you paid for the satellite dish, it was double that as a fine. But you then can imagine you. the six months in jail. You six can, months in jail and then they killed you. <laughs> yes, yes. Then they killed you. Well, I want you to know I just got back from Iraq and all over Baghdad, Guess what was lining the streets? 
guess what was lying in the streets? So there's going to be a TV program, and I want to do it with Matt and with Paul and Jan because now you can buy satellite dishes, and you were talking about foundation and where we're going from here. There's approximately 700,000 Christians in Iraq, but with that, so satellite dishes, there can be literally millions, millions more. And, you know, we've been talking about loving our enemies, and to tonight, tonight, there are 150,000 American soldiers who are literally risking their lives man, for man, you man, man. and for me. Yes. Today there were two Amen. more that were killed. And a moment ago I saw a brother over here. He's got, a, he's got an American flag. We, don't, we really can't appreciate the privilege we have right here with the freedom to worship. Because in, in Iraq, it was the first time in my 24 years with Feed the Children, they would not let me personally deliver the food because they said the areas we'll take you in where children are hungry, you won't come out because you're an American. But we got food in, we're still sending it in, but here's what else we're getting in. Next week, the toys that your mother gave to me are going to Iraq. You know, after the Second World War, we literally, with the Marshall Plan, flooded Europe with food. And what's really sad tonight is, I went in a children's hospital, and there were, I, I visited 45 babies, 45, and nine out of 10 that I went to, you know what they said to me? They said, these children are here because of malnourishment. And then something else happened to them. And they said, the money Saddam made from oil, for food, for medicine, he made palaces. Yeah. And this is what is so very sad now. Right now you're seeing a shot of Baghdad, a town of over five million people. And wherever we, wherever we went, there were soldiers, there were tanks, you were looking over your shoulder because you literally did not know what was getting ready to happen next. This is right outside of our hotel. And you see the barriers there because we had threats while we were there. This is the Tigris River. And one of the things that, that happened to me personally was that when I went to visit with the American soldiers, and this astonished me, they've got a gun in one hand, and with the other hand, it's the soldiers that are doing the humanitarian work. It is not the humanitarians. Two humanitarian workers have been killed. One driver's been shot. And so consequently, it's American soldiers who are trying to give out the food, give out the medicine, and at the same time, they don't have the resources to do all of that. A captain told me he went into his own pocket and bought food and school supplies for children. So if we are really going to, quote, love our enemies, then it's going to be that we're going to do it with food and with medicine and right now just giving it to the soldiers because we can't go in because it's just literally too dangerous. And so it's a real joy tonight to be here and to have the freedoms that we have yes. and, and realize that when you go out tonight, somebody's not going to shoot you. Yeah. When you go home tonight, you turn on the water, there's going to be water. When you flip on the electricity, there's going to be electricity. Because do you know what I heard time and time again? When Saddam was here, we had water, we had electricity, and we had security. And now, we don't know when we're going to have water because it's being sabotaged. We don't know when we have electricity, it's being sabotaged. And we're definitely not secure. Now, this is a picture right now that, of the hospital that I went in. And if you can imagine, all you mothers out there, if you can imagine being in a hospital, you had to borrow money to get to the hospital, your baby's sick, they don't have the proper medicine, you don't have money to go out and buy the medicine, and... This baby here, the doctor told me, he said, this particular baby will not make it. And it all started because that baby didn't have anything to eat. And so I want to encourage every person who is listening, regardless of who you support, if they're doing something in Iraq, we need to reach yeah. out to the children of Iraq because if we're going to win those people, it's going to be from the grassroots up. And you know what I've discovered? It's hard to be mad at someone who is feeding your children. It's very hard. And in a concrete way, we can affect 
We can affect what is happening in Iraq. We have won the war, but we have not won the war on peace. And the only way we'll win the war on peace is by helping the people and meeting what you and I say, needs that you and I every single day take for granted. This man right here was, sh was shot in the leg. This man stepped on a mine and he went out and I watched him literally wash himself. And so in your prayers, pray for our soldiers, pray for our president, and whatever you can do to reach out to these people, they are really under the gun and they need our help in a, in a phenomenal way because I believe that it's gonna be our Christian compassion that's gonna pave the way for the gospel to be shared throughout a country that's been under the gun for over 25 years. Um, I, awesome. I wanna say something. Um, I, I was gonna say this when you finished. We can help with donations, with money, with, with, with uh, care packages, with toys, with things like that, one of the most powerful ways that we can help is through prayer. You see, um, uh, many people don't know how powerful prayer is. I, I recently got married, and I married a woman who is one of those praying, praying, praying women. You know what I mean? The down on your face praying, you know? And uh, she taught me some things about praying that I never even thought. I thought I was a prayer, you know what I mean? But um, prayer is so powerful. When you send up your prayers, if we all pray together, yes. prayer is powerful. Amen. So in sending your, your, your donations, whatever they may be, don't forget to pray. Amen. And Amen. pray to gird our soldiers, like he said, who are over there, who are risking their lives on a daily minute-to-minute -minute basis. We need to lift them up in prayer. Amen. So keep your prayers Amen. powerful and coming. Amen. You know, the thing about it is that if you give someone what they want, you can eventually give them what they need. Exactly. That's so good. taking food and satellites that's good. to get Christian television over, that's what they need. Amen. You know, but we need to give them what they want. And Larry Jones has been one of my heroes <laughs> because he feeds millions of people a day. You know, there's there's food out there. We've got the food. What he does is he transports it and he gets it to those places. He's ministered all over this country, all over the world and taken food and stuff. So Larry, I love you. And I thank you for doing that for me in times that I can't go. Let me, let me say, Laurie, because before the program tonight, Laurie and I were talking. And the other thing to add to what Smokey said, when you have 150,000 soldiers over there, that means more than likely you've got 150,000 spouses over here. Yeah. And they don't get paid the most. And so we've been coast to coast at Army bases, Naval stations, Marine bases. And so I just encourage you, if you know someone who's got a spouse over in Iraq, I would encourage you, take them out to eat, mow their yard, pray for them. Because That's That's they, it's a lonely, lonely time when That's your spouse good. is over there for 12 months in harm's way. And what we need to do at home, listen. There is a war going on right now, even though it's not on the front page, even though it's not the first story in the news. There's a war going on, and the Democrats and Republicans have politicized it, but that doesn't make any difference if you've got a son or a daughter over there who's in harm's way. It doesn't make any difference. It has nothing to do with it. And so I just encourage you, while you pray and you help those overseas, please remember these that are home. Thank you for helping me remember that. Well, you know, it hits home to me. My cousin, we just spent, uh, my cousin has been stationed over in uh, Germany. And her husband, who is a chaplain in the army, Chaplain Brian Walker, and he's over there living in one of Saddam's palaces in Baghdad. And so Cheryl came over here with her family just to get away because they say he should be gone for a year. And so I thank you, and I know that you've ministered to all the families here. And I just, I just think that's an incredible call. And you're going to be able to watch a whole documentary on how it all started. And that story is absolutely incredible. And at nine o'clock tonight comes your first life's interruption. Life's Interruptions, God's Opportunities. And he's got a book, a new book. It's around here somewhere. Smokey might be sitting on it. I don't know. <laughs> I thought I was sitting on it. There it is, right there. Life's Interruptions, God's Opportunities. And the television special airs tonight at 9 o'clock in about 40 minutes. And so please stay tuned for that. 
how many have enjoyed this program so far tonight? Isn't it awesome? You know what? We started this program tonight by just saying, what if we just started over? What if, what if the body of Christ really became a body? And what if all of a sudden uh, we decided that we were in unity? You remember, you remember the story in the Bible when uh, they were in one accord, okay? You know, something kind of powerful happened at that point. The Holy Spirit fell. And you know what? What if, you know, I see a body of Christ together. Okay, I see it. I can, I, I literally see. And it's like this network was given to us for now to say that I see a future where we are one, where we are united worldwide. And we put down and we say this, we declare one thing, we're free. And you know what? God is all control all the time. He's, he's my control. <laughs> Let's put it that way. And let's just agree to agree that we're just the people that have been set free. That's all we've done. And we are one. Before Natalie has to leave, before Smokey, let me just tell you this. I had such a privilege of being and working with you over the last couple of months, Smokey. And um, we were talking about um, loving one another. He did one of the most incredible music videos that we, I want to play it right now. Smokey Robinson, this is his very first Christian album, entire Christian album, and this, this cut is entitled uh, Gang Banging. And let me tell you something, we had an incredible time putting this together in Los Angeles, California, and uh, you know what? It, it, I think that two things happened to me. We agreed that we would see this as the positive side of what was going on. He never takes and points his finger and he says, you know what, just go this way. There's a better way to go. And you know what, that is the awesome part of what this song declares. Smokey Robinson's brand new album. Put it up on the screen if you could, uh, just real quickly. There it is. And uh, Food f for the Spirit. And that's his brand new album. This is one of the title cuts off of this and it's called Gang Banging, and it preaches to a lost world. What? That was Matt, awesome. Matt, Matt, <laughs> you the man. Yeah. Matt, yeah. Matt. Right, 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 right. I, I was just teasing with him. I said, now, Smokey, now, who had the camera on his shoulder shooting that? Who was that? I think you know him really well. Yeah, okay, a little too well. <laughs> yeah. You know what? We had a great time out there, and that is off uh, Smokey Robinson's brand new album and uh, his very first Christian project. And uh, put the address up so that we can, uh, I'll read it off the screen as soon as you put it up. And uh, then everyone will know how to get it. There it is, Smokey Robinson, 859 Hollywood Way, number 325, Burbank, California, 91505. Leave that up for just a moment. I want to also mm -hmm. say. Matt, I want to say that's just to, to, to write and inquire about it. But if you want to get it, it's 1-866-SMOKEY-4. That's where okay. you can get it. Got it. Yeah. Perfect. And that, either way. Yeah, and uh, this, you this right here, let me just hold <laughs> this up to someone. There's, a, there's your website, too, www.smokeyrobinsongospel.com. And uh, zoom into this here in my hand. Let me just uh, get a real, real tight shot of this. We're going to do it right here. Look CC at that. CeCe Winans' Woo! brand new British album. Woo! Throne Room. And... Uh, that's the way I wanted my hair to look. Look at that makeup. Look, <laughs> look at that hair and that makeup. Look at that boy. And uh, <laughs> that's how the saints. That's how the saints supposed to look like that. That's how you supposed to look. Come on. That's how the saints look. Ow! Come on. Okay. Let me let me uh, let me put this back up. <laughs> yeah. Here we go. Cece has a new album coming out. She sent me five of her songs on a little disc a couple weeks ago called Throne Room, and um, I have worn it out. And it is the greatest worship CD I've ever heard. And it is just September 9th. September 9th. And I just say, not for sales or anything, but if you love the Lord and you love to worship, run to your stores that yes. day. Because it is absolutely awesome. All that stuff is awesome. I uh, already know all the songs because Lori plays it in the house all the time. We just have the little sampler thing. Uh, coming in August throne room the brand new uh this new uh release spiritually captivated heartwarming thought provoking i didn't have to read that off i already knew that because i have it in my home and it is awesome and that is coming from cc winans so 
Anything new, Kurt? He's got everything. Yeah. He's got your your album's still time. selling so much that I'm you don't even have to do a new one. I'm just a full-time daddy and <laughs> raising raising four kids. Praise I got a beautiful. That's the call. Come here, come here, boo. Come here, come here, come here. Run on up here. You gotta understand. This is this lady right here, man. This lady, this lady right here. This is <laughs> this is the truth right here. This is my baby's mama. This is, no, your baby mama. Yeah. Your baby mama. We have four children. We have a 15-year-old son, a 14-year-old daughter, a six-year-old daughter, and a two-and-a-half-year-old son. And this lady is the quarterback. I Come mean, on. She, she, she makes it happen. You know how we say it? Behind, uh, behind every great man, there's a lady rolling her eyes, okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Y'all help me show some love for Tammy Franklin, everybody. Everybody, help me. Okay. Let me, uh, let me just ask the audience if we can do something. Uh, Natalie, would you do another song for us? Come on. Hey. Do something. Here we go. Something real easy. Something real easy. I don't know that. You guys just work something out. What's Something real simple, like, oh, come, let us adore. What? We are not in that place. <laughs> <laughs> kind of praise God. Go. Oh, come, let us adore. Take it, take it. Come on. Oh, come, let us
Lord, Lori, I just want to say thank you so much. I'm so full. I'm going to be talking about bloated with the spirit. <laughs> but I'm going to certainly lavishly sow it on everyone whom I meet when I leave this place, when we all leave this place. Let's not forget to lavishly sow. Yes. Lavishly sow. You know, the, the, the soil that we... Don't worry about the soil. Just lavishly sow it. It's going to get on the right soil. It's going to get exactly where it's supposed to go. Just don't hold it back. Be bloated with the Spirit and then lavishly scatter it wherever you go. Thank you so much. And you were talking about ministering to them. I have been ministered. I, I, have you been ministered to? Yes. And for the first time, just spending some time with Kirk yes, and spending finally, a little more finally. time with Cece and, of course, reuniting with my, my good friend, my dear long-time friend, long-time friend. And also, it was, it, was, it was God's way of putting us together the way we ran into each other. That was, that was no coinky dink. That was, that was the spirit saying, come on. Come on. <laughs> so thank you once again. Thank you so much. God bless you. I'll see you out there. I'll see you somewhere out there. All right? Hallelujah. Keep his name on your lips. Come on. Jesus. 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 Hey. Jesus. Jesus. Wherever you go. Jesus. Let's thank Natalie Cole for being with us tonight. Wow. Can you believe this? Incredible. Amen. You're watching the Praise the Lord program. This is a broadcast that when my lovely wife and I come down here to Orange County from Hollywood, California, we have absolutely no idea what we're going to be doing. We have, we, we never plan, we never think what we're going to do, and somehow, some way, the Lord just takes over. All we do is try to get really good people on with us, <laughs> maybe something will happen. You know what, that's awesome, and uh, you know what, this is, go ahead. You know, Natalie was at the Hollywood Bowl one Saturday night, and after she was going through her program. She's coming towards the end of it, and she said, you know what? She said, I know most of you ain't going to church in the morning, so let me bring a little church to you. And out came the choir, and there she went. And she is married to Bishop Kenneth Dupree, who we had the privilege of listening to and hearing early church um, Sunday morning. He pastors in uh, Nashville, Tennessee. Woo! I know why you married the man, Natalie. He can sing, and then he preaches on top of that. You know, we were talking just a while ago about the testing and what he was talking about Sunday morning. I thought that's where you were going. That was so good. It was good. great. Talk it was on great. that. That was so, it was so good. It was no, so talk. good because, because my, my, my husband, by the way, hi, honey. Hi, honey. Hi, honey, <laughs> wherever you are. <laughs> anyway, he was speaking on, on on the secret of his power and how we we um, a lot of times people are wondering why they haven't passed the test, right. why why God still has has you in the same place, you know, kind of like a foot nail to the floor, you just keep going around like this, you know, you wonder why you're not getting anywhere, you know. But the truth is, is that you have to equip yourself with the truth and you have to go to the Word to get the answers. You can't cheat, and that's when he started talking about no cheating and no talking when you're going through the test, no talking and no cheating. When you're being tested, no talking, no cheating. But guess what? The good news, it's an open book test. Yeah. 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 Hallelujah. Yeah. No excuse. No excuse. It's all there. So, But it's a good word to have when you're being tested. Because, you know, a lot of times when you're being tested, you just whine and you moan. And, you, and that's exactly what the devil wants you to do. You know, and then you can't get any power by doing that. But take the test. Be strong. Take that test. But it's an open book test, y'all. You don't have to worry. You can't, you can't lose with the stuff you use. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. We're going to have to bring this on out. But anyway, thank you, Bishop Dupree, for that word. It was a good word. Hope you get a chance to see him speak again. He truly is a man of God. He's on his way to another place. I'm just proud to know him. Okay. All right. <laughs>
<laughs> you know what? That that truly was awesome. Bishop also said, "Hey, you know, the tennis racket in my hand doesn't right. mean anything, but put it in Serena Williams' hand, and it's a valuable thing." Yes. Well, what do you guys want to do now? You know what? Uh, Daryl, come here, real quick. <laughs> Pastor Daryl Yarborough. Why don't you uh, take a moment and uh, make a little sense of some of what's been going on tonight. You know, pastors always have to kind of take and whatever happens, they have to kind of make sense of it. Make, make, make some sense. Let's see, see a vision with us. What's, where are we headed with the body of Christ? What's happening? Well, what I've seen tonight is some very wonderfully talented people, but get beyond the talent and you'll see an anointing on their life. I don't know if Dr. Paul and Jan Crouch could see 30 years ago what God is doing tonight. The Bible says that in the last days, God is going to gather us together. And tonight what you've been seeing is very, very simple. You've been seeing world famous personalities. You've seen a couple of pastors come together. You've seen a movie producer come on this stage. And you're watching the body of Christ come. And God is gathering us together. And it's been told many times that in the last days, there's going to be a move of God, unprecedented, that's going to shake the world. And do you think this is an accident tonight that we're here and you got people in this studio from all backgrounds, all kind of personalities, people that have been out of drugs and alcohol, gangs, prostitution, money laundering. I mean, you've got the gamut in this building tonight. But the good news is, is that there's a blood that came from Calvary that's covered a lot of people tonight. And you're not looking at the same old man. You're looking at a new man. You're looking at a new creation in Christ. And tonight, it's wonderful to see wonderful people like this, people that I have sat in my living room and just, my, 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 my. I have said, well, if I could just get up there, I'm going to do an album. It's going to be entitled Natalie, Smokey, CC, and Kirk, and One White Boy. Hey! We're going to shake it. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> but... But what I love, what I really love, is to see us all come together in the unity of the faith. And I'm reminded of a scripture, if I can, just to kind of bring this home a little bit. Luke chapter 15, verse 17, talks about a prodigal son. The Bible says in the verse 17, and he came to himself. There's a lot of people tonight just need to come to themselves. In the Greek, it really means that he shook himself. He stopped what he was doing because he realized he wasn't in the will of God. And he shook himself. And the Bible says he realized where he was. He had sunk to a depth that he knew he would never go to. Yet he found himself feeding some swine. And that day, it literally meant that he was in the hell of his life because he was doing something he never thought he would be associated with. The next thing you know, he says, I'm going to get up and go to my father's house. He said, if there's one place I can be accepted, it's going to be at the father's house. He rehearsed his confession. He even said, I'm going to go to him and I'm going to tell him I made a mess of my life. I'm going to go to him and I'm going to say this and I'm going to say that. But here's the good news. The father was waiting on him to come home. You see, he, he knew one day he would get tired of the way he was living. He knew one day he would find out that, that all this living that he thought he was living was not really living at all. And the next thing you know, he's walking home rehearsing this confession, and the father looks and he sees him and he runs to him. And the Bible says he stopped everything. He said, get me the best robe that I have. Get me the best ring that, I can, that, that, that is in the storehouse. Find me the best shoes and bring them to my son. And it goes on to say this. Listen to me very carefully. It says, the son who was lost that I thought was dead is now alive. And there's some people watching tonight all around the world. You've seen some of the greatest of the greats. And you're wanting to be like that. But the only way you're ever going to be like that is to get what they've got. And the good news is it's available. It's available to you right now if you'll just call on the name of the Lord. The Bible says he'll answer you. You see, the first time when you prayed, God heard you. But sometimes God's wanting to see how bad you want it. And tonight, if you want it, you can get it. Can I just pray with people tonight? I don't want to take up a lot of time. You've heard some of the greatest of the greats, but tonight we're going to meet the great. 
we're going to meet the greatest of all. His name is Jesus Christ. And the same Jesus that has touched all these lives, who changed me at the age of 17 and called me to preach this gospel, this same Jesus can touch you right where you are. Doesn't matter if you're in a hotel room or a hospital. Doesn't matter if, if, if you're in a, your living room or wherever you may be around this world. I came here tonight to tell you that Jesus is your answer. And before you even get to the door, before you even start walking down the aisle, before you even make the prayer, you're going to hear a father come running to you. And he's going to put a robe around you. He's going to put a ring on your finger. He's going to put sandals on your feet. He's going to make you a new creation. And it's going to, and here's the good news. Let me say this. Good God, I'll be preach. Let me say this. You see, Jesus won't just pardon you because pardon means that you are free, but you're still guilty of the offense. You see, when you're in Jesus, he'll completely restore you. To be restored simply means that you are put back into original condition. And if you're in original condition, you can no longer be found guilty for the things that you have done in your life. He doesn't just pardon you. Come on, somebody. He'll set you free and he'll completely restore every day of your life. You're going to be new. You're going to be new. So it's not pardon. We're not talking about pardon. We're talking about restoration. And there's some people tonight need to be restored. It's time to come home. It's time to come home. Come on, pray with everybody. Pray with me. Dear Jesus, come and save my soul. I repent of my sin. And I ask you tonight to come and live your life through me. I accept you now in Jesus' name. Amen. Now lift your hands and rejoice. Come on. Thank the Lord. You're a new creation in Jesus. Hallelujah. You did us good, Carol. Oh, yeah. Come on. <laughs> You know what? You guys, you guys get a song ready to take us out, okay? Kurt, you figure out something to do. You can, uh, we'll, we're going to do that. I got one thing to do, though, okay? Tim Miner, thank you for being here. I got one thing to do. I want everyone to, uh, to pray for Generation Entertainment, okay? That is our company. We've produced several films. We have a brand new project. Let me hold up something right here and just show you something to get excited about, okay? Zoom in here, and I want everyone around the world, take, take a look at that shot. Zoom on in to the poster. Can you, do, do you see who that is right there? You need to get it in focus, first of all. There we go. And you see who that is? That's the President of the United States of America. That is the Defense Secretary. That is Colin Powell, Secretary of State. And look what they're doing. They're praying for their decisions over this nation. That's the leadership of this country. Go back to the poster and then just start sl slowly zooming out now for me. That is the Department of Homeland Security seal and a brand new television, network television pilot is in production by Generation Entertainment. And guess where we are hoping this is going? You ready for this? Kurt, you listening? Guess where we, guess where we, guess where we want this to go? Yeah, you know what? TBN can use this too. But what about ABC? What about NBC? What about CBS? Getting a Department of Homeland Security television series that has as its foundation prayer from the top to lead. What about what about an action show like 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 you remember the A Team? You remember the X Files? You know all the. What if you put those together and then undergird them with a concept of God bless America? What about prayer that leads our agents to do what they're supposed to do? Okay, if you want more information on this, uh, you know what? And guess what? Uh, Steve Blinn over here is directing this entire uh, series. He's standing against the wall right there, Steve Blinn, and. Uh, We've already done some shooting on this. We've got an, a huge shoot happening uh, in uh, Sunday night right here in Northridge, California. And we've got, you know, like uh, uh, 30 fire trucks and 60 police cars and FBI agents and 600 people. And we're doing this big thing. And, and, and this is called a network pilot, DHS and uh, it's in production. This is a little taste, okay? We have only shot one day, but we couldn't come here tonight and not try to put something together. This is a, this is a, just a little something, you know, it, it's one day of shooting and a little bit of creativity. Watch this about DHS. <laughs> 
that take their commands from a team of people that are led by these guys right here. What about a new series on network television that has the President of the United States and his entire cabinet bowing their heads in prayer? That's what we're headed towards. That's where we're going. We're going to IBM and we're staying there. We're taking the message of the gospel. We're going into the world and it is going to happen. We are going into production, ready for this, on two brand new feature films, One Night with the King. The story of Esther, okay, is going to come to the big screen. How One Night with the King. singing from Miss Cece Winans oh. in that movie? <laughs> yes. And so, you know what, we've got a lot of things. Blessed Child is a brand new production that we have in production. Brand new feature films, and the Lord is doing some great things. And you know what, we are going to the big leagues. Okay, Generation okay. Entertainment, guess where we're headed? And we'll make more announcements about this when we can. We're headed to Wall Street, and it's gonna happen, I promise you. And let me tell you something, because I believe that God's in control all the time. And Satan doesn't control Wall Street. And Wall Street's looking for some kings to just walk in there and say, I represent the kingdom of God and the authority on earth. So guess where you'll see me next time? I'm going to be on Wall Street, and I'm going to bring back the finances necessary to change and affect the world. It's going to happen. I promise you that. So somebody sing a song. Kurt Franklin. Tim Miner, come take this mic, man. You know how to sing a song Tim, or two? Yeah, yeah. Tim, Here we go. Um, and uh, now listen, you're going to get some time cues. This is a TV show, okay? We're okay, live. Okay, okay, 33 satellites. Okay. And these guys back here are going to be timing attention. you down. We're attention. going to take it out in song, okay? Here we go. Attention. Thank you for being with us tonight on this Praise the Lord program. Guys, take it away to the end. You guys, you guys know our God is an awesome God? Yes, yes. You guys know our God is an awesome God? Yes. Stand up on your feet. Stand up on your feet. We try to do this. I know. <laughs> I can't sing. I don't know what I'm doing. Sing. No, our God. Ready? Come on. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven above with me. I'm trying to give you these words. Yeah. He's marvelous and he's glorious. Marvelous and he's glorious. glorious. He's blessed and victorious. And victorious. He took away the fear in us. Took away the fear. I praise him because you delivered us. Praise him because you delivered us. There ain't no stopping us. There ain't no stopping us. No. Devil, there ain't no. Come on and clap your hands. Oh, come on, roll with everybody. Our God, come on, come on. Our God is an awesome God. He reigns from heaven.
okay, okay, someone okay. Else, else. One, more, one more time, one more time, okay. We got one. Young people, what do you want to hear? What do you want to hear? What do you want to hear? Come on, come on, come on. Everything. Come on. What? Are you going to sing it? Come on. It's funny. I know people at home are laughing at me. <laughs> you gotta sing it. Come on, sing it. Lately, lately, I've been falling through something that's really got me down. Hey, come on. Did I sing it? Did I sing it? I need someone to You better talk it. Turn my life around. Say, you wanna hear it? You, you better talk it. I can't explain it. I can't explain it. Sing it. I can't obtain it. Jesus, your love. Jesus, your love. It's so amazing. It's so amazing. Everybody rock with me. Give me eyes up to the sky. And when I, and when I think about your goodness, it makes me wanna. Everybody do your hand like this. Everybody do your hand like this. Come on, do your hand like this. Come on. Makes me We're so glad you've head. been with us for Praise the Lord. TBN has a worldwide ministry. We need your love gifts, large or small, to help keep the gospel of Jesus Christ going around the world. So write today. Praise the Lord, P.O. Box A, Santa Ana, California, 92711. Or in Canada, write TBN, P.O. Box 768, Station B, Ottawa, Ontario, A1P 5P8. If you haven't asked Christ into your life, Call our prayer partner now and pray to receive Jesus as Savior and Lord. Now until next time, remember to praise the Lord.